it's Bob here and once again I'd like to welcome you to another episode on the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. In this episode I'm going to show you how I built this battery box. Now you might be saying to yourself, if you've been following me for a while, I've seen you build a battery box before and that's true. But it was a battery box for going inside the cabin of the vehicle. This one is built to go outside the cabin of the vehicle, exposed to the elements. Here in Australia, a lot of our four-wheel drives come with what we call a tray-back or what the Americans would call a flat top. And rather than take up room on the tray-back with an auxiliary battery, the way to go is to put the auxiliary battery underneath the tray or flat top. So I've built this box for that purpose. The box itself, it has top mounts because it'll be mounted on the top and hold downs for the battery. It's a 50 kilogram battery, that's about 100 pounds. It's a fair bit of weight to be swinging underneath what is commonly an aluminium tray or flat top. There has to be a bit of structure to it. I hope you follow along and I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. I am making the battery box frame out of 3mm or approximately 1 8 of an inch thick steel plate. I commence by marking out and then cutting a full width strip 180mm or just over 7 inches wide. I am making this cut with the jigsaw using a piece of aluminium box section as the guide. I'm also using the jigsaw to cut a 50mm or approximately 2 inch wide strip that I will use to make side brackets and other things. Back in the workshop I used a cold cut saw to cut out the two side brackets as well as some pieces of angle that will be used to make mounts. I have a shop made pan break here that I am using to form the basket that the battery will sit in. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed a second marker line down from the first bend. That wasn't a mistake in marking. I use this to calculate the bend allowance that I need to include when determining the clamp point for each of the subsequent bends on the basket. The top mounts of the basket are 50 millimetres long. The sides are each 250mm or about 10 inches long and the bottom 320mm or about 12.5 inches long. These measurements are based on the dimensions of the battery being used plus an additional 10mm or 3 8 of an inch as a margin. I have bent up the basket using the full strip of material. When I have bent it to the final shape, I then cut off the excess, again using the jigsaw. Earlier on, I had cut out two 50mm long lengths of angle to use as mounting brackets for the removable side strap. And here I'm marking a centre on one side, where I will drill a hole to take the mounting bolt.
The battery box hangs under the tray back and is attached to a mounting bracket located on the top side of the tray. The mounting bracket consists of a flat strip with two studs which pass down through the tray floor to hold the battery basket. There will be a mounting bracket on each side. The studs will be made by welding two bolts to the flat strip. But here I am drilling matching holes in the mounting bracket and the battery basket, first running a pilot hole and then a larger drill to match the size of the bolts. To overcome any variations in the fabrication, I mark a directional arrow and label for the corresponding mounting bracket plates and the battery basket. I do this first in chalk and then repeat it with punches so that the marks will be visible after painting. Here I have lined up the components in preparation for welding. The two V shapes will be the mounting brackets for the hold down bolts. Bolts will be welded to, into these angles to form the removable bracket mounts and the holes for the removable bracket will be drilled after the mounts have been attached. The fixed bracket, the mounting brackets, off camera I have beveled the top holes and ground the bolt heads so that the finished bracket will be relatively smooth on top. I have also made spaces which go between the top of the basket and the tray floor to accommodate the underfloor webbing. I start the welding with the mounting bracket studs. followed by the fixed side strap which is tacked on both sides before being welded out. Then the brackets for the removable side strap. The battery basket fabrication is completed with the battery clamp V mounts being welded in place. Off camera I have made the battery top clamp and with the battery in position I determine the length of the hold down bolts that I will need to make. 
The bolts themselves have hook ends and having cut two equal lengths of six millimeter or quarter inch round to size, I then bend one end of each to make the hook. I then thread the other ends using an M6 by 1mm pitch die, first shaping the top with a file to make an easy start for the die. And here is the completed battery box before it goes off to paint. With the battery box back from paint, here I am using a contact adhesive to glue rubber spacers to the inside of the two side straps. As you can see, I started applying the contact adhesive with the brush, but this method of application was not working so well on the rubber pads, so here I resorted to spreading and forcing it into the surface with a spatula. I'm using a gel adhesive as it is a little more forgiving of poor fit up but I also cover my bases by taping the rubber pads in place overnight. Now with additional rubber going between the battery and the base of the basket as well as the clamp everything is ready for the install. With the holes already drilled in the floor of the tray back the mounting bracket studs are pushed through from the top. The basket is then offered up with the pipe spacers in place. The steel pipe spacers are slightly shorter than the depth of the aluminium webbing. Consequently, when the nuts are tightened up on the studs, the webbing is crushed slightly, preventing any loosening of the bracket in use. With the basket top up against the floor webbing, I then loosely fit a nut on each side to hold the basket in place, after which I bolt both sides fully up.
before the battery goes in the DC DC charger is attached to the side of the battery box to fit the battery it is juggled up between the differential and the box and then slid back into place now I'll be totally honest here the battery that is being used weighs some 50 kilograms or 110 pounds and moving it into place needs two people both underneath the vehicle one on each side of the basket I work on my own so I have to cheat I fitted the battery and electricals in the workshop and then with the battery box sitting on a trolley jack I wheeled it in under the vehicle jacked it into position on the mounting brackets and then fitted and tightened up the nuts and called it good here you're seeing the battery in position with the DC DC charger and cables fitted Note, uh, I've also fitted locking nuts over the primary nuts on each stud. This is a hanging basket and uh, you can't be too careful. With the battery hidden under the tray back where it can't be easily checked, a low voltage disconnect switch was mounted on the outer rail and wired to the output side to prevent the auxiliary battery being fatally discharged. I've not covered the electricals to any great extent in this video, but here is the wiring diagram for the system. The DC, DC charger draws power from the starter battery and feeds charging voltage and current to the auxiliary battery from which the output is taken to the low voltage disconnect switch and then on for use. However, let me point you, the viewer, toward my three part series on building a portable battery box for a better insight to the wiring up of this type of system. These are the major components that I've used here. I'm in no connection with any of the brands shown, but I don't have any complaints about these products either. I will post further detail in the video description. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I would welcome a thumbs up, and by all means, share it amongst your friends, and even people who aren't your friends. This channel is about making, maintaining, fixing, and restoration projects, and if you like that sort of stuff, and you haven't already subscribed, well, hit the subscribe bar down below, and don't forget to ding the bell, so that you are reminded by YouTube whenever a new video on the White Dog Garage channel comes out. Thank you once again for watching and I look forward to meeting you on the next episode.